Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is having a good Wednesday. My name is Maritza Gertie, and welcome to another Looped In with Maritza. Um, I am the Deputy Director of Parent Voice and Outreach for the National Parents Union. And before I go any further, this is for educational purposes. And that's all you need to know. It's for educational purposes, just to make sure we keep everything on, you know, on the level. As you know, family, every time I come to you, I make it a point to talk about certain things. Before I get into what's going on locally in and around the Philadelphia region, if you need to reach me, my information is maritza at npunion.org. Feel free to send me an email. If not, try to reach out to me through, through my Facebook page by the same name, Maritza Gertie. If you are interested in knowing about the National Parents Union, here is the website, nationalparentsunion.org. If you need information regarding National Parents Union, it is info at npunion.org. The National Parents Union has several campaigns. An ongoing campaign since our beginning has been the Every Family Votes campaign. Please remember that there is an election every six months. Every six months there is an election in, the, in this country, whether it be a city, a city official, elected office, state. We have a lot of states that just went through primaries. Um, many midterm elections are going to be happening this coming November. Please make sure that you are registered to vote. If you're not sure and you want some information, feel free to go onto the National Parents Union website, click on the Every Family Votes tab. On there, we'll give you a breakdown and links that you can go into to check to see if you are registered in your state, also what the age requirements are, how early you can register if you're not yet 18. Also, for any returning citizens, it'll let you know per state what are the requirements to deem you as an eligible person to be able to vote in your state. Now, to become an you can also become an individual member or an organizational member for the National Parents Union just by going onto the website, nationalparentsunion.org, click on the individual organizational tab. It's a very brief Google document that you fill out. Once you become a member, whether it's individual or organizational, you will have access to and advanced access to many, many resources for being a National Parents Union member. You will have resources available as far as toolkits, parent toolkits, um, community toolkits, um, some guidance on how to have a town hall at your school with your elected officials if you're interested in things like that. Anytime we have a special grant opportunity that comes out, members get advance notice to give them a heads up about what's going on. It is a plethora of information in English, in Spanish, and also in French. So please uh, become a member. It is free. It is not anything you have to pay for or pay any dues on. Epic. Everyday parents impacting change. It is something that is still ongoing. We as parents and guardians of school-aged children still have questions. And we have a right to ask questions of our school districts, of our states, of our schools, of our school communities with regards to what is being done with the millions that have been allocated across this country from the American Rescue Plan regarding the ESSER funding. So if you wanna find out, if you wanna be part of that to pledge to be an EPIC parent or guardian, look, go on to epic.nationalparentsunion.org and fill out that questionnaire. Every third Tuesday of the month, it is Parent Policy Hour and Ask a Lawyer. So if you're a person that's interested in knowing your rights as far as your child's educational rights, tune in to National Parents Union page to find out um, every third Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Our policy director, Christina Laster, is on giving information to let you know what your rights are as a parent or guardian of a school-aged child. For those of you that don't know, Aside from there being a main National Parents Union Facebook page, we now also have 
many regional pages. So we have a Northeast region, a Midwest region, a Texas region, South region, California region, Puerto Rico and US Virgin Islands region, and the far west region. So no matter what part of the country you live in, including Puerto Rico, you can like that page and get regional information from the National Parents Union, as well as our, we also share information from our partners within those regions as well. But please remember, liking us on a regional page or the national page does not automatically make you a member. You have to go onto the National Parents Union website to become an official National Parents Union member. Now for some local information. Families in North Philadelphia that are in the area of Tanner Duckery Elementary School or in Philadelphia, period, if your child is a rising first through third grader and you are still looking for a program, Freedom Schools Literacy Academy is still taking registrations. Go to the centerblacked.org. They're still taking applications. Click on the Family tab and you'll be able to enroll your child to attend in person Freedom Schools Literacy Academy. It will be for the entire month of July. It's a five week program. If you're interested, here is the information. I will also be sharing the link in the comments for anyone that wants more information. The Philly Families Project Cares Food Pantry opens Saturdays from 10 to 12 at 5911 Larchwood Avenue. So anyone that lives in that area, Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., boxes of food are available to families. My Camden family, kids will eat free at several locations across the city of Camden. Um, at Miguel's Pharmacy, 1.15 to 2 o'clock, they will be serving lunch. At Alberta Woods Park from 2.15 to 3 p.m., they will be offering afternoon snacks from June 27th through September 2nd. To learn more, go to foodbankssj.org. I will also be including this information in the chat. A free summer reading program, Read to Succeed Philly, is offering an instructional program, begins July 5th. Go on to readtosucceedphilly.com slash register for more information. Now, without further ado, I'm going to bring on my guest and we're going to have a nice conversation. Hello, everybody. Hello. Please introduce yourself. My name is Raphael G. I am slash comedian, TikTok sensation, author, DJ, talk show host, professional wrestler from Brooklyn, <laughs> from Brooklyn New York, Boricua born. <laughs> and it's my pleasure to be on your show. Thank you, for Mar Maritza, for inviting me. Oh, my gosh. So I wanted to ask you on here because we have had so many heart-wrenching things go on. And I always try to, you know, I always try to bring a person on that can uplift, um, make us laugh, make us smile. <laughs> and when I saw you, I've seen you. And, and for those that do not know, Yes, I'm one of those people that gets lost in TikTok, TikTok <laughs> space sometimes. So what ends up happening is I just see people and I see people and I see people and I saw you and I was like, oh my gosh, he is so funny. He's amazing. Thank you. And I know that if you're making me laugh, <laughs> you've made me laugh in some of the toughest days. Yeah. I, I want to just share that with other people. And I thank you for that. I get so many messages. Um, right now, I have a uh, GoFundMe going for a, a lady named Kathy Huxaby that lives down in Florida. She was my first ever inspiration uh, uh, fan that reached out to me. Um She's going through, uh, it's called a keno failure for the kidneys. Um, she has to do um, dialysis three days, three times a week. And she wrote me this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful message. Um, I was at my, I was actually at my um, daughter's 
college graduation party in Long Island. So I wasn't getting any messages or anything on my phone because the, the, the service there sucks. I was like, okay, great. You know, nobody's bothering me, this and this, that. I can leave TikTok alone for a few hours or whatever. And I get home. And now I'm getting all these alerts. Ta, 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 ta. And I'm like, what the, oh, man, what's going on? And I read this message. And I just started bawling, 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 bawling. And she was telling me that she sees my videos during dialysis to make her dialysis go through. She goes, I watched all of your videos. I keep watching your videos. Keep watching your videos. Keep watching your videos. So I was like, you know what? Let me get to know at least one of them, you know? And we became very good friends. She explained to me her situation and everything. So I sent her a couple of my merchandise shirts and everything. And she sent me pictures with the shirt on at dialysis and stuff like that. And then after that, I'm just getting kept getting more people. I got people who got cancer, um, mm -hmm. HIV, um, mental issues. Um, because you know, the pandemic really screwed a lot of people up. So when I started doing TikTok was exactly a little bit after the pandemic hit. Okay. Uh, because being a comedian, you know, you're out at the clubs, you're out in, in, in events. Nobody was open. Nobody was open, you know. So I was like, how do I put my material out there? How do I do this? How to do that? So my kids were on TikTok. And I'm like, what's this TikTok thing? I'm, and I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is hysterical, you know? And I started dibbling and dabbling, you know, screwing around and everything. So I was like, wait a minute. I, 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 I'm I, funny. I can do this, you know? So I started doing it. I wasn't getting that many hits. For a little, for a while, I, I was about to give up until, okay, we're in July. I was about to give up until april of this year hit oh wow and i only had at the time in april was 700 followers you know most of them were just people i didn't know i was just doing stuff i did one video now i hit twenty five thousand, and i'm like okay something's happening and i'm just doing videos doing videos doing videos doing videos doing videos doing videos and then um, a buddy of mine was like put up your comedy routine put up some clips and I started doing that, and one of them hit over 160,000 hits. And it was about how come Puerto Ricans are not in horror movies, you know? The clip that I love <laughs> is the one about why Latinos aren't wouldn't, wouldn't be good, wouldn't tolerate the exorcist. No, that's the one. That's the oh! one that hit. That was hilarious. And that's, I was like, no, that's no. the one that hit. Yes. 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 Um, that came from personal experience. Um, <laughs> because every time, like, if your child is doing, you know, I mean, not to bring down Santeria, that's one thing I was never trying to do. It's still an official religion. It People is. confuse Santeria with witchcraft. They it's do. not the, the same. Yes. Yeah, Santeria is an actual religion that worships the saints. They worship um, Jesus Christ and everything. So I was like, you know, the mother in the movie took a beating. She got puked on. She saw things that she wasn't supposed to see. You know, these two priests walked in there and the power of Christ compels you and she kicked their butts. Mm. So I'm like, how do you fight a demon? Wait a minute. Doña Guga, can you come over here real quick? <laughs> and the idea was to show how impactful and funny you can use this because Latinos, not only just Puerto Rican, Latinos, we're, we're divas. Okay. When we coming in to hit you, we're going to come in hard. We want theme music. We want everything. So when I put um Hector Lavoe's Aguanile into the mix. Oh my goodness. It just took off. It that just was took it, off. You, you touched so many chords. You touched on so many adults' childhood memories yeah. of yeah. seeing that person come in there because I don't 
you know, I have memories yeah. of, of, of being, of accompanying folks going to somebody's basement that has candles and incense yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and it's and it's like you said it's it's crucifixes and saints and yeah. this and that everywhere and then it's the the, the music the drum beats and yeah. and it was constantly and someone coming out with, with with a bandana on and you know smoking a cigar mm -hmm. and, and saying let me do you want me to read something for you and i was yeah. like I was, li I was young i said no no thank and, you and, and and you know what's the the, the perfect thing about it a, a Santero couple, an official Santero couple that help people in the community, they they acted out the joke. They did it. They did it on TikTok. They acted it out in their garments and everything, the official garments. They even had a girl on the bed with the uh, exorcist filter on her face. And they waited to like, you know, they, they they let the joke go through. And then when the music hit, they came out the room to fight this this girl who's possessed. I mean, I was in tears because it was like an honor to have real Santeros do the skit. And they weren't offended by it. I was like, I hope I didn't offend it. Well, like, dude, dude, you brought us out of the typical uh how, how's the word? Uh, 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 what, what people would look at us as, you know what I'm saying? What, like stereotype? Yes, yes. Okay. He was like, you took us out of the stereotype with that joke alone. And the funny part is my boss calls me one day on a weekend. I'm by my hair hanging out with my ex-girlfriend and I'm watching TV and he hits me up. He goes, hey, I need to talk to you and everything. I'm like, oh man, what the hell did I do? So I hit him up. So what's going on? He goes, um, did you see the video I sent you? So I look at it. I was like, yeah, it's my TikTok. He goes, my brother sent me this. And he goes, yo, this guy's hysterical. <laughs> yo, did you see what he did? And um, I told him, well, did you tell him I work for you? He was like, he don't believe me. Oh, can you, can you FaceTime me? So I said, okay. I said, you know what? Let me put on my hat and everything. And I got on there and I did the whole thing. And... The guy looked at me, he goes, dude, where are you performing at? I got to go see you live. I got to go see you live. You oh, know? my gosh. I mean, in this day and age, you know, I, the clubs are too loud. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going to a bar is like, okay, whatever. But going to a comedy club. It's a different atmosphere. It, it absolutely is. You, you know, it's, it's, you're more relaxed. You, you get to sit and enjoy and escape. Yeah. Some of the realities of what's going on in today's mm -hmm. world, but but tell me, Rafael, what, why comedy? What out of all the things you could have done as an adult, why comedy? It's the cheapest psychiatrist in the world. <laughs> it's the cheapest psychiatrist in the world. Um, comedy is my way of escaping everything, you know, and like. I'm going to quote the great Bernie Mac when they asked him, why com Why are you so good? Where, where do you get your comedy from? And he said, pain. You know, if you ever watch my show, the 90% of it has to do with stuff that I went through growing up. You know, um, I'll give you an example. What they call discipline, I mean, what they call abuse today was discipline when I was growing up. Yes. Okay. You know, the belt, the, 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 oh, you're going to kneel at the corner. That was our timeout. Yeah. Okay. And if you yes. were really bad, they threw rice flakes on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So, no, not rice flakes. No, yes. we, we, my, my mom and my Thea used to put like a, it was a little tray. Yes. Filled with rice, not a little bit. Yeah. You had to kneel in it. Yeah. I mean, that you, was, had, you had to hold two cans. That was, you had to hold the book. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That was comedy to me is an escape from reality. Um, I hate to see people miserable, um, depressed or whatever. You got to have a smile on your face once in a while, because let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm not no Tom Cruise, whatever. I'm 51 years old. I look a lot better than some of these 25 year olds that are out there because my, under, you know, I, I grew up learning that, when you're always depressed and you're always angry, you get old a lot faster. Yes. A lot faster. I don't want to get, I don't want to be that, you know, I know I'm going to 
I got willing, I'm going to get into my 80s or something, but I still want to look a little bit good. You know what I'm saying? Like when I die, I want to die with a 25 year old next to me and I want to come and go at the same time. I want to, I want to go, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I want to go, you know? So when I started doing comedy and everything, you know, I'm talking about real things that happened with my mother, things that happened with my dad, my brother, my siblings, with my kids. Um, you know, I, I'm not proud, but I I did dabble at one time with you know the drugs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when I stopped it, I you I put that into my comedy. Like I talk about the funny things that happen about it, but at the same time, I tell about the crazy things that happen about it. Like when one time I I, I was so potted up, I went into I was my brother used to play tricks on me. Because he knew I was twisted. I was just trying to play it off, you know. So one time I went into the kitchen to get munchies. And at that time they used to have, I don't know if you remember the SAP button on the cable box. Yes. That, that used to make everything talk Spanish. Yes. You know how funny it is? You know how screwed up it is that you're in the room. You come and you were, watch, you were watching Forrest Gump. And you come back and Forrest Gump is talking Spanish. And you're you're like, oh my God, what the hell? And he's over there going, to get una caja de chocolates. I was like, what the? <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, wait a minute. So at the same time, I tell people, look, you know, stop because people can do things to you. You know, that was just a funny joke, but you know, that <laughs> so, so you mentioned that you, you you took a lot of your comedy from your family and your personal experiences. Mm -hmm. But what who else inspired you to get into comedy? My dad and my mom, they, my mom's, my mom and my dad are the funniest people on the planet. You know, like my mom, I, I just took my mother to go see Elvis. Okay. Mm -hmm. We went on a date Saturday to go see Elvis. We're the only Latinos in the theater. Oh, okay. And this is in Comac, New York. All right. This is like the suburbs. So she lives out there. So I said, mom, I'm going to take you. We're in there. And my mother's like, how come all the golden girls are in here? And I'm like, mom, stop. <laughs> I'm like, will you stop? What are you doing? Oh. She's like, oh, these viejas better not say nothing to me. I was like, oh my God, mom, will you be quiet? You know, my father was even crazier. My father, one time, I remember I was maybe early 30s. We went to a, a party. He was a little tipsy. So he goes to the bathroom. Me and my brother are like, let's go with him, you know, just in case something happens. And uh Bunch of Dominican guys are in there. And my father goes, I don't like Dominicans. And I'm like, oh, no. I said, here we go. I told my brother, pull out the gun, do something, because we're going to get fight. He goes, I love them. I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they bought my father drinks the whole night. The whole night, they were buying him drinks. Oh. I'm like, daddy, you can't do this. My father, my, my like, what I found out later before my dad passed in 2012, what I found out later when he went, like I, I've done shows and I've, you know, I've gotten nervous in some sets or whatever, but the most nervous one was when he came to see me mm. his first time. I was like on stage shaking. It went well and everything like that. And I, after the show, he sat down with me. He goes, you remind me so much of my father. And I was like, how did I, I remind you of our willow? Cause my grandfather was always a very serious person. He said that my father in Port, my grandfather in Puerto Rico used to go to people's funerals that he knew in the town. Like everybody in San Germán knew everybody. San Germán, where my grandfather's from, is like the Montes, the Hibaros up there, you know? And he didn't go there to give eulogies like, oh, you know, we lost him and God. He went up there and goes, you know, I used to get drunk with this guy. And one day we were getting drunk and blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> And people would laugh because he didn't want to view the person as the person being dead. He says, I'm remembering him when I used to get drunk with him, when we yes. used to go chase chickens from the neighbor's backyard or steal people's mangoes and stuff from the trees. And my father was like, you doing what you're doing, your grandfather would do it at funerals. Yeah, he would go celebrate their life. So when I did my father's eulogy, I did the same thing. People were like, don't you dare go up there and do a comedy act. I was like, my father was a happy person. 
Ain't no way I'm coming up on this stage and be like, well, daddy, I miss you. I already did that. I already had to talk with my father when he was still conscious and everything. So I went up there and said, y'all remember the day my father tried to pay drinks with his welfare card at the club and all this <laughs> stuff? And I just went in there like that and just did it, you know? So what... What was your school experience? Because like, look, I, I didn't tell you, I'm, 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 yo soy Dominicana, mm -hmm. and I'm, I was born in Brooklyn too. So okay. I, I, I was able, let me see. I was only there long enough to go to PS45 kindergarten and PS, just regular PS45 before we moved to, to Pacific, New Jersey. But I remember so many things from just though, my very, very early years in Brooklyn that were just hilarious. So, but me being, being being Afro Latina, when I was little, I got teased a lot from my name. Okay. In kindergarten. Okay. Because my classmates didn't know how to say Maritza or Maritza. They would just mm -hmm. say all these other things and they never said my name right. So when I was in first grade, I said, I'm not gonna give them my name. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just use a regular name. Mm -hmm. So I said my name was Lisa. Okay. Okay. And when I said my name was Lisa in first grade, I told my teacher that and all my classmates. Okay. But for some reason, my mother had to come to the school. Okay. All I know is that I was in my classroom and I see my mom. And oh. I'm like this. Oh, I got stories about that. <laughs> so the teacher's like, is there a, a Maritza in here? A Maritza? And, you know, the, she's telling this woman that I know is my mom. There's no Maritza here. She's like, Maritza Horini. And, and I just like, and, and she's like, that's Lisa. My mother said, what? <laughs> you know, what? Come on, come come on, I, say I'm not Lisa. You say I'm Marisa. It's exactly. like Halim. And she's telling this woman, no, my daughter's name is Maritza Horini. And yo, when I got home. Oh, you got it. I got it. From her, you know, my dad didn't put his hands on my mother. My mother was just, was the one that used her Yeah, name. my mother too. My mother was the assassin. My father, he just said what he had to say. He was like, you have a problem with your name? Mm -hmm. I gave you your name. Mm -hmm. But never again did I ever misrepresent myself when it came to my name. And to this day, I have an issue. If someone even spells my name incorrectly, even in email. Yeah. By the way. In all caps, it's M A R I T Z A. Yeah, yes, yes. And yes. people are like, "Ooh!" But that's because that's that's how much it was ingrained. So, how was it in school for you? Were you the class clown, or what was it like? I was the class clown and the class protector because I was always the biggest kid in the class. But talking about names, my real government name is Rafael Gracia Jr. And when people say, Gracia, like, thank you. And I'm like, no, Gracia, like, grace. There you go. Okay. And white people got a bad habit of going, instead of saying Raphael, which is simple, they go Raphael. And I'm like, mm. my name is not Raphael, it's Rafael. And they'll be like, and they used to tell me, are you sure you spelled your name right? Because if Garcia's G-A-R. And I was like, it's Rafael Gracia. Junior, that's what the JR stands for. Junior, I used to go through it all the time. So, when I got into the entertainment field, I said, I'm gonna keep it simple, Raphael G. Just keep it simple, just keep it simple because I want to be fighting more than entertaining, yeah. You know, so I used to get I, I, in school, I had my incident with my mother, but my mother didn't care. <laughs> she didn't care. She got a letter from school. Your son is acting up. He's making people laugh. He won't stay still. Blah, 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 blah. And I knew hell was coming. I knew it. My mother back in the days used to wear, I don't know if your mom did it, but my mother back in the days used to have those pink rolls that they used to put in their hair. The rollos, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. pink ones, the big ones. Okay. And we lived, we lived on 9th Street. My school was on 12th Street in Manhattan. Mm. My mother's coming up 2nd Avenue. You could hear the wind going through the rollers. <laughs> ooh, ooh. And I'm in, I'm in this building. I'm like, she's coming. She's coming. I can feel my mother coming. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, da. Ooh. Man, she got up to that class. 
with the letter in her hand. Oh my gosh. And I remember my teacher's name. Her name is Miss Wexler. She goes, Miss Wexler. Because you know, she, she didn't know English that well at the time. They go, What happened with my son? Oh, he doesn't behave and everything. And all the kids are looking at this lady like in shock because she got these rollos on. My mother didn't care. My mother was in chancletas and everything. Like, and I'm the only one writing. Like, <laughs> two plus two is seven, <laughs> seven times seven. And all she goes, she goes, Rafael. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh. Excuse the language. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> Oh damn, Rafael! I'm like, oh, because I'm in the back of the class. I'm the tallest kid in the class. You know, back then they used to put all the tall kids in the back. So it was the longest walk from the back of the class to the front. Like I'm walking, you can hear that song, dun 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 dun, oh, like like God. the exec like the executioner song, dun 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 dun. <laughs> she goes, what is this? Didn't I tell you to behave? Yeah, but Ma, right in front of the whole class. She goes, now go sit down. The teacher was like, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Grasso, she was like, no, 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 no. Be quiet. He's not going to do it again. <laughs> Believe me what I tell you. Never again. And I tell people these stories, and they're like, no, we don't believe you. We don't believe you. When I did, when I, one day I was doing my talk show, we was doing talk, talking about parents, and they didn't believe me. So I called her live on the air. Mommy. But he's young. Hi, Papi. How you doing? I said, Mommy, you're on the show. She was like, Oh my God, why don't you tell me? I would have fixed my hair. I said, Mommy, you're on you're the, on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Oh, okay. I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I said, Ma, when I misbehaved, didn't you? Were you the one that would? And she would, and, and in front of, I mean, I don't know where. She said, I will kick your bleeping butt now, like I kicked your bleeping butt then. And everybody mm. looked at me in the studio like, your mother's gangster. Mm. So the and experiences you had, you had with your mom, you know, it's 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 what's giving you a lot of, of, of stories to be able to draw back on and bring into your comedy. So you're a dad. So what was it like for your children with 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 Poppy the comedian? They loved it. <laughs> they loved it because. And I like when when I was married, she was the disciplinarian, you know. Um, I was just like, you know, when I had to be serious, I was serious. And when I lost my temper, they were like, okay, now we piss daddy off because he's normally funny, you know. Um, uh, I used my comedy to try to get as close as I can with my kids, you know. I was letting them know that life ain't all that serious. You know, you can be funny, but at the same time, be respectful on the way we raised you. You know, mm -hmm. um, there was times like when my son would bring his first girlfriend to the house. I was like, oh, my son, <laughs> she's sexy. You know, he'll be like, dad, stop it. Stop it, dad. I was like, stop it. You know, or when, when my daughters brought my, my older daughters, because I got I got twin girls who are 30. Okay. My son is 25 and my youngest is, she's 21 thinking she's 31. Gosh. Okay. So when my son would meet the twins friends or whatever, you know, they're a little older. My son is going to his puberty stage and he'll be staring and I'll be like, Tommy, what do you think you could do with that one? Just not that. Come on, man. What are you doing, man? Stop. I was like, come on, you're your father's son. Show them how much you're made of. You know? <laughs> and he would get that, stop it, dad, stop it. You know, he'll stop, dude, stop, you know. Um, I would I wouldn't embarrass them, but I made their friends comfortable where they were got to a point that they got too comfortable, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, Mr. G is so funny, and this, this or that, whatever. Um I try to show them that. Comedy is, is like I said, the cheapest psychiatrist there is. It's the cheapest. And I mean, if, if you might not be funny on stage, you know, some people are funny amongst their friends and family, but they're not funny in stage. I mean, I was blessed that I can do both, you know, and I use that to 
get messages across. You know, you, you try to get messages across. You try to break the ice. You know, I listen. I I I, I work among highly educated men, and where I work at. Okay, I mean, like, hi, I'm from. I went to uh, I went to, to get my PDC at DC, and this one one guy is RVD at uh, WHT, whatever. And I'd be like, well. <laughs> One time we were in a meeting and I was like, well, I once caught VD in DC and they were like, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> and I was like, you see, it broke the ice. It broke the ice. We all want the same goal at work is that you say it your way. I say it mine. That's right. And my boss is like, you know, I'll never ask you to change because I love the way you know, I, I'll tell a customer. Hey, listen, ya suavemente. OK, now you're asking for too much. You know, I need a purchase order. Okay, you want it? I got it, you know. And they're like, oh, yo, he's one of our biggest customers. I was like, doesn't mean I'm gonna let him walk all over me. You know, right. he has no complaints, he gets the work, we get the work done. It's just like I'm telling him, I'll help you, but there's a way you gotta approach me if you want my help. Because at the end of the day, I don't care if you're the president of the United States, the king of Switzerland, or the queen of London. If you're going to treat me like crap, I'm going to come back at you. Because at the end right. of the day, I am human. I don't care how rich you are. At the end of the day, the, we're, we're, we are worm food. Okay? We're going to push daisies. You can't take your money with you when you die. Have you, like, like Denzel said, have you ever seen a U-Haul follow a hearse to a funeral? Mm. So, That's listen, right. at the end of the day, what you leave... Your family's gonna fight for it. Your kids are gonna want it. Your grandkids and everything. Me, I just want. I'd rather have a legacy put out there than material. That's, that's right. That's my opinion. That's right. So, for what would you say to anyone that want that aspires to be a comedian? You know what 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 words of advice would you give them, or what advice would you give to a parent? You know, every all parents aspire to have their children be to find a solid, you know, way of earning an income, something that you know that is not that they're not gonna be working one day today and getting laid off tomorrow or you know, get rich quick schemes. What would you say to a parent that sees that their child wants to aspire to be something like a comedian or a young person or even a person that's our age that says, you know what? I want to get into comedy. What advice would you give them? Well, when it comes down to someone who has parents and both of their parents are still alive or just one parent, whatever. If one of your children says, I want to be a support, show them support. Without support, it takes away their ambition to do something positive. Um, my parents gave me support. Who I didn't get support from was my ex-wife, you know, mm. unless you got paid, I wasn't getting laid. Excuse the language. I'm, I'm keeping it real. Oh. Uh, um, she wasn't brought up in this country, you know, so her ideals are, well, if you're going to perform, you should be getting thousands of dollars and this or whatever. That's not the way it works. I mean, it, 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 it takes time. It takes steps, you know? Yeah. I mean, couple of hundred dollars here whatever you know but um if you don't have that person in your ear saying like if you had a bad set you know like man i knew these these jokes killed in this club why didn't it kill here you need that voice in your keep your head up don't quit figure out what you did wrong and and if you have to change it change it you know, and it's not that some, okay, every comedian does the same joke at every club until it becomes televised. The crowd is different. The crowd's always, the mic is still going to be there, but the crowd changes. If to be a comedian, you have to understand if this worked here, it might not work here, especially being a, 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 a Latino comedian. You know, I've done shows where there was no Latinos in there but because i know how to do impressions and um i may I, I i know what it was to live on that world i use it like i'll say i can do this joke here but i can't do the doña cuca one here 
So as I got older and more experienced, I said, I, I can able to do it on both sides, but explain it differently. You know what I'm saying? I'm actually like, if I do it with the Latino side, I don't have to explain nothing. You guys already know what I'm talking about. But if I do it in uh, on the, what they call the other side of the fence, the crossover, um, you have to do a little bit of an explanation. So you keep it simple, but direct. Be true to yourself. Be you. Don't copy anybody else. You know, when I first started, I thought I was Bernie Mac. I thought I was Richard Pryor. I thought I was George Lopez. That wasn't working. People, people professionals catch on. They'd be like, hey, the joke was funny, but um, you're not Sinbad. You're not, you know, Richard Pryor. Be true to yourself. Practice. Go to all the open mic shows. Pay your $5 to get five minutes. That gives you the experience. That's the most important thing is that to have that fear of being off stage taken away. Once yeah. that fear, oh, you come overcome that fear and you go on stage, you focus on one thing. You know, we call it the light. It's the light at the back where they flash for you to come off. Focus on that. Still look at the crowd, but keep focusing on that light because you don't want to pass your time. You don't want to um, 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 take somebody's time away. That's one thing. You got to respect the time, you know, mm -hmm. learn. Get to know other comedians. Come up with ideas. Study. Study the greats. Richard Pryor, Bernie Mac, uh, Sinbad, George Lopez. All these guys, even, you know, if you're a female, your, your favorite female comedians, you know. Um, Cheryl Underwood is one of my favorites. I watch her because I like to watch what women comedians talk about. Study, 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 study. Every, like I said, oh, uh, comedians, they all say the same joke, just different ways. Yeah. There's going to be mama jokes. There's going to be drug jokes. There's going to be sex jokes. There's going to be uh, raising kids jokes. It's, so when you study, you're like, hey, I remember I did this with my kids. That was funny. Oh, I remember when I first made love to a woman. That was funny. I remember when I uh, 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 got robbed in the hood. That was fun. And they all talk about, now you telling your story. It's just a different version of it, you know? And once you get that, but you got to have support. You got to have support. Many parents that are listening, I know I'm a, my mouth is a little, you know what I'm saying? But this is who I am. I'm like this on stage. I'm like this in real life, you know? Support, 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 support. Like now, when the TikTok thing started blowing up, you know, people like yourself reached out to me. Hey, man, I love your work. Hey, man, I want you on my show. I got some people now that are working to hopefully get me booked, like in Philly, Baltimore, and stuff like that. Um, it takes time, you know what I'm saying? And that's my payback, you know? Like, that's my accomplishment. Now I'm starting to get the boys running now, you know? things. There's a lot of things. I don't want to say too much because I, I i believe in jinxing myself yeah there's a lot of things coming up the pipeline where my talent is going to be expanded to different places and stuff like that and people are finally going to get to see what i'm made of because i i you know i'm not someone who brags i don't like blowing my own horn or anything like that you know god gave me a gift for a reason but i can hang with the best of them i yeah. know i could I That's can hang awesome. with the best of them. I can hang, I mean, not with the top elite yet, but yeah. I can get I can go alongside, you know, a Mark Vieira and do a good show with him. I yeah. could do I could do uh something with George Lopez, you know, I because I can hang with him, you know what I'm saying? You give me an hour, I can doing comedy for an hour is just talking smack, you know, oh and, and then you know, me doing like impressions, like I, I do my Marge Simpson, I do my Bill Clintons, I do my Forrest Gump, I do this, I do that. When you do impressions, you make people say things they normally don't say. Like Schwarzenegger using the bathroom, you know, come on, oh, come on, poopy, come out. I have to, I'm, I gotta get, get out, poopy, I gotta do my poopy, oh, you know? Yes. So you do that. Put it together. Everybody has a different routine. You could be a political comedian, a dark comedian, 
funny oh comedian. Oh my gosh. So, so tell me this, in your opinion, as, as you know, you're a parent, you've had your children in school. Um, how important are the arts in school? Because we're seeing across the country that a lot of times, you know, prior to this influx of what they, uh, of this money, this COVID relief money, a lot of school districts were saying, well, you know what? We don't have a lot of money in our budget. So one of the first things to go it's was the arts. the arts. So how did, how important do you feel it is to keep the arts in school for all of our young people? It's very important because without the arts, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I loved the arts. I loved the arts in school. Drama class. I mean, my first play was playing a uh, 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 sneezy on the Seven Dwarfs in the boys' club. You know, when I first got kissed by Snow White, I faint. I literally fainted. A woman never kissed me before. You know, <laughs> the arts is very important because it lets your it lets your child express themselves let them show a different side on the, the talent that they have you know oh he's a little nerd but he can play a hell of a piano you know i've seen kids that i met my biggest regret i never learned how to play an instrument like my dad and i go to these schools and i see kids playing guitars and violins and i'm like my god that's beautiful the arts is their way of expression Arts is your way of expression, no matter what it is, singing, comedy, acting, whatever, you know, it's without it, your child cannot express themselves. These kids these days were born into this. Yeah. Okay. They're born into this. Yeah. You and I were not born into this. You and I, if we wanted to see a concert, we had to go to the concert. There was no pay-per-view. There was no YouTube. There wasn't, you know, none. I saw Freddie Mercury sing Live A Live. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? On TV when it happens, you're like, wow, look. They going out there, you know, it's, I mean, great acting. Like, my favorite actors are, like, Denzel, Gene Hackman, Al Pacino, um, Robert De Niro, all these guys. And that's art. That's art. You know, you're like let them express themselves, you know, because everybody wants that smart kid. Go out yeah. there, become the CEO, become your own boss. You could be your own boss in the arts. Yes, you can. You could be your own boss, you know. I mean, <laughs> arts is very, I miss it. I mean, I used to love going, I hated gym class. I mean, even though I was an athlete, I played games. Listen, I was an athlete and everything because my cousins were athletes and we were outside every day after school playing the weekends in the summertime. We didn't spend home all day gaming and everything, uh, playing NBA. We played real basketball when I was growing up, you know. If we went to the arcade, that was a treat, yeah. Okay, yeah. you and I come from the same era, it was a treat to yeah. go to the arcade. But yep. if I want, if I wanted to play something, it was either playing stickball, handball, basketball, football, anything that had a ball in it, we had to play it. You know what <laughs> well, I'm saying? Well, not only are you, not only are you a comedian, but you're also an author. Yes. Yes. And this is the name of your book. Yes. Confesses, confessions of a concierge. Yes. 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 That book was written ten years ago. Wow. I was a concierge. I worked two years in a building here in Long Island City because that time we hit the recession and I got laid off. So a buddy of mine had his own FedEx route. You know, as everybody, everybody thinks, like, oh, FedEx is a big company. No, FedEx ground, the FedEx home delivery is independently owned. Mm. FedEx Express is FedEx. So he owned the route. He was like, listen, um, come work for me. I pay you off the books. You collect what you got to collect because I, unemployment was not paying the bills, you know, until you find something. I said, okay. I worked for him for like six months. And the building where I ended up being a concierge was a building I delivered to. Wow. <clears throat> but the only thing is, it's the only building where the super was in the front desk, not a concierge. So every time I went, I said, like, where's your concierge? He was like, these guys never show up to work. I got to cover the desk because packages are coming and everything. I can't do my normal stuff. I said, yo, how much is it paying? So he told me how much it was paying. I was like, it's basically what I'm getting now. 
Mm-hmm. But it was, you know, on the books and everything, taxes and everything. I said, you know what? I got to get back on a payroll because I got to get benefits and everything. So I got the job. And the book is about how miserable rich people can be. Mm. Okay. And there's a lot of good people in the book. Okay. I wrote, I wrote about them. Um, I couldn't name their names because legally I can get sued, but so I gave them character names. Yes. You know, so I had I got one there. Her name is uh her name is um uh what you call it? I call her the hippie. She she was a hippie from the 60s, you know. She was like spaced out, you know. So I called her the hippie. Um I met a, a couple there, a gay couple. Uh he was a doctor, he was a teacher. And they were the most beautiful people in the world. Um, I had gotten a bad kidney infection at the time. And I was out of work for a few days. And he would come and tell me, uh, let me see your release forms. Let me see what they prescribed you. You know, let me see what's going on. And he would give me these things. And he would talk to me and say, hey, listen, um, we bought you a case of water. It's upstairs in the apartment. Um, If you ever want to go... You know, because I had keys to the apartment for stuff like that. He goes, when we're not home and you need water, go upstairs in my fridge, pull out a couple of bottles, bring them downstairs and everything. I don't want to see you drinking soda. And I don't want to see you because because they they were, they they want, they caught me one time. They caught me one time. I ain't going to lie. They caught me one time. And it was, they were very dramatic about it. Didn't we tell you not to be drinking this and stuff? <laughs> um, I met some very good people. That didn't that they did not forget where they came from. Mm. Okay. But I met some people where I actually saw how ugly the world can be. You know, mm. like these were beautiful apartments. I mean, it's something that me being a father at the time and blue collar would say, God, what I would give to give this to my kids, what I would give to give this to my wife. You know, here you got it and you don't know how to act with it. So I I was writing. Every time I saw a certain person, I would write my thoughts about them and why they are who they are, the good and the bad. And I kept it in there for 10 and on the cloud for 10 years. Mm. A buddy of mine who, you know, has been on my show. He got a couple of books out. I just asked him. I said, um, how do you publish a book? Oh, you know, it takes money. You got to pay this amount, but that covers your legal fees, this, that, whatever. I said, oh, okay. He was like, don't tell me you got something in the works. I said, yes. <laughs> like, send me the transcript. And I was like, what the hell is a transcript? You know, just, just send me what you wrote. I was like, okay, I sent it to him. But about two days later, he calls me up. He goes, you got to print this. You got to print this. The way you tell stories. It's the same way like I'm on the show, like I'm talking with you right now. It's the same way I wrote the book. I wrote the book so it's like you and I having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. What's going in my mind. Mm, mm, mm. It was like, you got to print it. You got to print it. So he introduced me to the right people. I, can I give a shout out to AJB Publishing? Thank you. Andrea, you are the best. You made a dream come true for a guy like me. And um, we put it together. And it's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. It's starting to pick up pace now, you know, because of TikTok and stuff like that. But yeah. they gave me a three book, two year deal. Oh, that's wonderful. The second book will be hopefully, God willing, will come out the end of this year, which is called Mi Vida Loca Tales of a New Yorican. I'm actually going to talk about my life story growing up in Brooklyn and Queens like that. So um, there it is, folks. It's right there, the title. You can find it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and look for Rafael Gracia Jr. And you'll be yes. able to find this. And you know what's funny? It, it, it boggles my mind when, I, when I'm when i having so much fun and I'm enjoying. Yeah. And my, my time is almost like. Phew. I know. I know. I do but it through no, my but, show all the time. But before, before I let you go, I also want to let folks know that for those of us that are sometimes in the mood, for a little bit more adult Extreme. comedy, 
a little bit more adult comedy. And I asked you about that because everything I've always seen from you has always been on TikTok. And some of it is like, <gasps> but other stuff is just like, you know, so, so G or PG. Yes. But for those who want to, you know, a little bit of a different flavor, you let me know how people can find you. And I'm going to copy this and put it in the comments. And mm -hmm. I'm also going to make a banner so folks can see. Thank and you. And you are on, you have a show that comes on, on Facebook. Facebook Live, yes. On Facebook Live. And folks just need to look for the LDM the, Network. The LDM Network, the R and R show. And they every, and you're gonna have your show tonight at seven. Yes, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. live. Every well, single Wednesday. I've been I'm doing this look, since, since 2006. Since the two the, I just want to give people an idea. The show is raw and ready. The R and R okay. show. You know, people will be talking about the car. Everybody's going to talk about the Kardashians. Everybody's going to talk about Roe versus Wade. Everybody's going to talk about this. My show will talk about it, but it, from a different point of view. Like, I want to know what Kim Kardashian's lawnmower guy sees. <laughs> her, 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 her maid, her butler. You know, yeah. like I'll, I'll ask questions like, does she wear a thong all day? You know, something like that. Oh my gosh. You know? And I come up with topics that will cause a little bit of a controversy but it'll get a, a it'll get a good uh a, a good response from when people will actually interact like today's topic is are the men of today are softer or more sensitive than the men of yesterday mm. okay because if you have to understand you and I are the last generation Generation X is the last generation before technology took over. Yeah. Okay. So are these guys that are in their 20s now, a couple of them in their 30s, you know, are they too sensitive where when an independent woman comes around, they're like, oh, come on, babe, please. Why are you talking to me like that? You know, okay, so you make more money than me. So what? Uh, 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 you know, <laughs> now to me, oh, independent woman, that's a God sent thing. Because remember, in our generation, the woman stood home. She took care of the kids. She raised the kids. The father was always there, but she's the one that made sure the kids ate, the kids were clean. It's a, I mean, if these women of, of today are were raised by good women of yesterday, and I hate to say this because I'm, I'm a father of four kids. I got three girls, one boy. I love my son. My son is... The, my, the love of my life but my daughters are a little tougher because they were raised by a woman from generation x they grew up around aunts and uncles and grandmas from generation x yeah. and we were taught uh-uh you better clean your dish you better wear clean underwear you better wear clean socks boy let me check your ears make sure you took a shower right you know now it's mm -hmm. like mom can i get a go-gurt what the hell is a go-gurt you know, so it's going to be an interesting show. And just like you stated in, 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 in the bio you sent me, laughter is the best medicine. I want to thank you so very much. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. It's my for, honor. And my for, for, for making me smile and hope and laugh and hopefully making other people smile and laugh and think and remember. Thank you, thank you um, very much. Thank I'm going to I, I, I'm going to look for you when you do get those dates. In yes. my area, yes. I'm gonna look for you next time I go because I call it going up top. Okay. I'm in Philly, so when I go up to New York and New Jersey, I always say I'm going up top. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know, and I'm gonna be like, "Yo, are you, are you anywhere? You know, in the city?" Yes. And I'm gonna go see you, and you're gonna Thank hear you. the loudest laugh. Thank you. Thank you, you so you're much. You're gonna be like, "Who is that?" Thank you. When my sister and I went to go see John Leguizamo when he came to Philly, we were so loud. When we were laughing, he was like, I got to bring you two wherever I go. Because we, we just love to laugh. We love comedy. So that's when the you best come this the way, I'm going to be like, come on. I'm going to bring my all my girls. Let's go. Believe me, when I get up there, I'm going to be a diva. I'm going to be like, hello, I'm here. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm here. Thank, thank you so very thank much. Thank you. It's my honor and pleasure. And listen, keep doing what you're doing. Keep educating these young parents and everything. Uh, because the media only shows our bad side, you know, uh, typical brown and black doing their things. 
listen, we raise our kids according to how the world comes at us. We're trying to defend them the right way, you know, and you just keep doing. Thank you. Thank you, National Parents Union, for having me. Um, it's my honor and my pleasure. And it's it's a good feeling that people who appreciate what I do, um, it's it's better than any big paycheck in the world. You know, as long I, if I die tomorrow, believe me, I'm a happy man because I ch I changed a lot of lives, and, and and I thank you for that. I thank you so much. Oh my! Don't gosh. forget to watch me live tonight on the LDM Network. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm gonna be tuning in. You're gonna see me commenting like crazy. But thank right. you so so thank very you. much. Stay safe out there, and I will You're talk to you safe. soon. Take care. God bless thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Family, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I certainly did. I hope you have a rest of an enjoyable week. Um, for those of you that are going to be enjoying this upcoming um, three-day weekend, enjoy it. For those of you that celebrate Fourth of July, please be safe. Enjoy your families. Please also remember that we still have something out here called COVID, so please be careful. Um, if you don't know where you're going to be, wear your mask. If you don't know the people you're going to be around, please make sure you stay safe. If you feel ill, stay home or get tested to make sure you don't have anything going on. Uh, this is another Looped In with Maritza, and I will be back very, very soon uh, with yet another amazing guest or guests. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Bye-bye.